فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The matter pertaining to knowledge uh, uh, that we're talking about um, we've mentioned the first part which is the importance of knowledge and we've covered that point because we're talking about beneficial knowledge so we talked about the importance of beneficial knowledge the second type is second point that we spoke about is the types of beneficial knowledge there is and now we're going to talk about the third part which is implementing that knowledge um, implementing uh, that knowledge a da'i who has understanding of the sharia who has now got the knowledge that knowledge has to settle in the heart of the da'i you see, it has, to, it has to reside in his heart. It has to, it has to reside in his heart. The da'i. Good. And he has to, have, has to have the understanding. It has to reside in his heart. It also has to what? It also has to be a, a knowledge that is in his mind. That he has comprehended. The second. The third which is what? The third which is what? That knowledge should then pass on to his limbs. That is called the beneficial knowledge. That's when that knowledge is beneficial. That the person, that knowledge soak, it, it, it roots into the person's mind, into his heart, settles in. Also, he has comprehension, world comprehension of it. The third which is what? He acts upon that which necessitates it. He acts upon that which that knowledge necessitates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warned the believers from a characteristics which is to have the knowledge and not to implement it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon, kabura maktan inda Allahi, an taquluna ma la taf'aloon. Oh, those of you who believe, why do you say that which you're not going to do? Why do you say it? Kabura, it has become great. Maktan, it's a great sin. And Allah, in the eyes of Allah. And taqulu, to say something. Ma la taf'aluna, that which you won't do. To say that, and call to something in which you don't embark on. And that is not found on you, or in you. You see, a person shouldn't be like that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, is a person allowed to conceal knowledge? The answer is no. A person is not allowed to conceal knowledge. So if you're not allowed to conceal knowledge and that you have to tell the people about it, then what does that mean? You also have to implement it. If you can't keep it in and you have to tell, then that means you are not allowed to. You're not allowed to be without implementing knowledge. A person says, a person may say to you, oh, I, I, I don't implement my knowledge, so I'm not going to tell anybody anything. Well, who said you can conceal the knowledge? Rather, what you're doing now is two sins. You're concealing the knowledge and you're not implementing it. You're concealing it and you're not implementing it. You've done two sins. You're not allowed to conceal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us as mankind to convey the knowledge as much as we're able to, according to our ability and according to the knowledge in which we possess. Allah does not burden a person over that which he doesn't, he has no ability for. Because Allah said in the Quran about those who conceal knowledge, who don't call to it. Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ Allah says, the ones who conceal the knowledge on that which Allah has sent down from guidance and clarity after Allah clarified it for the people. In the book, those who conceal it, أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ Allah and the curses will curse him. So sometimes you find Muslims say, be quiet about this matter. Don't talk about it. Well then, I have to choose between two things. Shall I take the curse of Allah and the curse of the curses? Or shall I be quiet about the matter? Shall I be quiet about the matter? Um, because um, people may look down at me. No, I don't care if people look down at me. The matter for me is what? That the curses do not curse me. And first of all, Allah does not curse me. And the curse, it means Allah's mercy is distant from you. The word la'an, la'an, la'an. It means that Allah's mercy is distant from you. Then Allah is going to distance His mercy from you. And then additional to that, the, the ones who are doing the la'na, their la'na will also be on you. 
the la'na of the ones that are saying la'natullah, la'natullah, the la'na is also going to go uh, on you. So no one should conceal knowledge. The asal of knowledge is that it's, it's given. ولذلك the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said عليه الصلاة والسلام the hadith that Imam Turmudi رحمه الله narrated and Imam Dawood رحمه الله and Ibn Majah all narrated and Ahmed and you can say Turmudi or Tirmidhi both is the same and the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said من سئل عن علم anyone who's asked about knowledge and يعلمه he has understanding of that knowledge he knows that matter he understands the ruling regarding that matter he knows it what does he do? فَكَتَمَهُ He conceals that knowledge. He doesn't mention it. He hides it. Or he doesn't want to tell nobody. He just says, you know, I don't want to talk about it. أُلْجِمَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِلِجَامِ مِنْ نَارِ When a person is silent, what happens? He doesn't open his mouth, right? الْجَزَاءُ مِنْ الْجِسِ الْعَمَلِ In accordance to what you have done in the earth is that you became silent. The day of judgment, what's going to happen is a hakama, A rope will be put into your mouth like the horse. Can a person talk if, can a, person talk if a, a, a rope like that it's put into your mouth and you're pulled with it. Are you able to speak? No, you won't because you need your lips to speak. You refuse to speak when you're in the earth. The day of judgment, well, this time is different because that rope that's put in your mouth is going to be from the hellfire. It's going to be from the hellfire. Um, uh, it will be from... وَلِذَلِكَ Sufyan ibn Uyayna ibn Abi Amran he said, and he was uh, the great noble Shaykh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Ajhalun nas, the most ignorant of people is, Man taraka ma ya'lam. The most ignorant of people is the one who leaves off that which he knows. Wa a'lamun nasi, and the most knowledgeable of people is, Man amila, the person who implements that which he knows. Wa afdalun nasi, and the most uh, noblest of people is, Akhsha'ahum lillah, the one who has the most khushu' to Allah subhanahu, Ta'ala. And he also he said also he uh, Sufyan uh, Ibn Uyayna himself said, Yuradu ilmi, the intent of knowledge is what? Al Hivdu Wal Amalu Wal Istima'u Wal Insatu Wal Nashru. Five things is what's needed from knowledge. The first one is to memorize it. That's the first intent of knowledge. The second one is to call uh, to implement it, sorry. To implement it. To you implement it. The third, which is the, the requirement of knowledge, al-istima'u, is to listen to it. The third, which is to listen to it. The fourth is what? wal insatu to be silent of it when you're taking it on. Take, take it on board. Be silent when the ulama are teaching. Take your notes and everything with you. The fifth, which is the last one, and nashru to convey it, to go and teach the people. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, Ta'allamu qabla an tasudu. Umar used to say, Learn before you become famous. Learn before you become leaders. Learn, acquire the knowledge. Because when a person normally tends to get um, publicity or he gets position, what happens a lot of the time is he loses the aspiration or the want to want to learn. Tends to lose it. Especially the person will say, I will lose my reputation. Why am I going to sit under this individual? Uh, why am I? So that le leadership wouldn't allow him to learn. That's why the Salah Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Ta'allamu qabla an tasudu. Learn before you lead. Learn before uh, you lead. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Ta'allamu, ta'allamu, fa'idha alimtum fa'amalu. He said, learn, learn. And if you learn, implement it. In another place, he said a speech which, wallahi, he hurts uh, uh, the believer who has um, a, a, a heart, who feels these words. Ibn Abdul Bar narrated this, this as he has narrated the one before uh, in his kitab, Jami' Bayan al Ilmi wa Fadri, that he said, Inna nas ahsanu al qawla kulluhum. The people have perfected the speech. Good, eloquent. He comes on, he speaks nice. Oh, good speech. He puts on. Hey, wafaqa fi'l. فَمَنْ وَافَقَ Then uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Anyone who is that beautiful speech of his, فَمَنْ وَافَقَ فِعْلُهُ قَوْلُهُ And anyone whose speech, it goes into congestion, it goes according to that and a speech, his action goes in accordance to this beautiful speech he just put on. فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي أَصَابَ حَظُّهُ That is the person who has received his portion of goodness. وَمَنْ خَالَفَ قَوْلُهُ And anyone who opposes his own speech that he said, فِعْلُهُ His actions فَإِنَّمَا يُوبَقُوا نَفْسُهُ He's the one who's going to destroy himself and destroy others and destroy others. 
So the person implements their knowledge. Abu Darda said, La takunu, la takunu taqiyan. You're never going to be a taqi. You're never going to have taqwa. Hey, hatta takuna aliman until you become a alim. You're never going to be a taqi until you, you are a scholar, a alim. Wala takuna bil ilmi jamila. And you're not going to be beautiful with knowledge. Hatta takuna bi amila. Until you become one. And until you become one who implements the knowledge in which he knows. And the poet said, إِذَا الْعِلْمُ لَمْ تَعْمَلْ بِهِ كَانَ حُجَّةً Knowledge, the poet said, إِذَا الْعِلْمُ If knowledge لَمْ تَعْمَلْ بِهِ You don't implement, implement it. كَانَ حُجَّةً It becomes a proof over you. عَلَيْكَ وَلَمْ تُعْذَرْ بِمَا أَنْتَ جَاهِلُ And you won't be excused for that which you are ignorant about because you have knowledge. فَإِن كُنْتَ قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ عِلْمًا فَإِنَّمَا If you have been given a portion of knowledge, you know, you have knowledge. If it's been given to you, يَصْدُقْ قَوْلُ الْمَرْءِ مَا هُوَ فَاعِلُهُ The person would be truthful about that which he says by making sure his actions follow it. His actions, it follows it. Finally, I'm going to conclude with one hadith that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Uh, the hadith is collected in Bukhari and also Sahih Muslim. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, لا حسد إلا فتنتين Envious is not jealousy. Envy. Envy is not accepting two people. رجل أيمان آتاه الله ما لا um, uh, and uh, the hasad here is not meant by tamanni zawal al ni'ma. You're not wishing that Allah takes the blessing from them. No, you don't want Allah to take it from them. You just want to have it either the same as them or better than them. La hasada illa fithnatain. There is nothing you can be hasid on. And you can have hasad to, with except two things the messenger said. Rajulun ayman atahu Allahu malan ayman. Allah gave him wealth. فَصُلِّطَ عَلَى هَلَكَتِي فِي الْحَقِّ And he just destroys that money in good. Gives it. Khair. Whenever he sees someone khair, he, his hand is just open. You see, وَرَجُلٌ أَمَانٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْحِكْمَةِ Allah gave him wisdom. فَوَيَقْضِي بِهَا وَيُعَلِّمْهَا Allah gave him wisdom. And he judges in that wisdom. He calls to that wisdom. And also, وَيُعَلِّمْهَا And he teaches it. That person, those two people you can be jealous of. You can have envy of. Now... Now, how can somebody obtain knowledge? A question that's always asked, huh? Recently, a, a, a respected and loved brother to me had asked me that question. He said to me, how can you, how can you obtain high aspiration? And how can you obtain uh, beneficial knowledge? So the answer to the brother is as follows. Ways to obtain knowledge. Beneficial knowledge. The first one is أن يسأل العبد ربه العلم النافع. The first one is the servant asks Allah for beneficial knowledge. He begs Allah سبحانه وتعالى. He asks Him سبحانه وتعالى ويفتقر إليه. And he shows that he is poor and he's in need of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. You see, and Allah سبحانه وتعالى ordered the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to ask him to increase him in knowledge. Ask me and I will increase you. As Allah said in the Quran. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِ عِلْمًا قُلْ سَيْ مُحَمَّدْ رَبِّ مَّا لُورْ زِدْنِ عِلْمًا Increase me in knowledge. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. And the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said اللهم انفعني بما اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني ما ينفعني وزدني علما The Hadith Tirmidhi narrated that the Messenger used to say اللهم أو الله benefit me that which you've already taught me. And teach me that which will benefit me and increase me in knowledge. The messenger used to make that dua. So, if you want to get not beneficial knowledge, beg Allah. Humble yourself to Allah. Ask Him. Because knowledge is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns. Second one is, al-ijtihad. is to strive. Fi talab al-ilm. is to strive in seeking knowledge. Strive. And to show want and willingness. And... Um, to come with all of the required means in seeking knowledge. The knowledge of the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to Abu Huraira and he said, Inni uridu. A man came to Abu Huraira and he said to Abu Huraira, I want to an ata'allam al-ilm. I want to learn knowledge. 
I want to gain knowledge. وَأَخَافُ But I fear أَنْ أُضَيِّعَ I fear that I may forsake my responsibilities, the things that I have to do, my children. I, I'm scared I might forsake. Abu Huraira said, sufficient for you forsaking is to forsake knowledge. كَفَى بِتَرْكِكَ لَهُ تَضِيعًا Sufficient for you forsaking is the fact that you left knowledge. Uh, what is worse to forsake? Your children and your wealth and that which is under you or to forsake knowledge. He said, en enough is that you forsake knowledge. Um, and also one of the ba'dul hukama, one of the wisdom, wise men was once asked, he was asked, ما السبب الذي ينال به العلم? He was asked, what are, the, what are the means or the reasons a person or an individual can gain knowledge? And then he said, بِالْحِرْسِ عَلَيْهِ يُتْبَعْ Striving that is followed by knowledge, all the time striving. وَالْحُبِّ لَهُ يُسْتَمَعْ And with love, with it, he listens. وَالْبِالْفِرَاغِ لَهُ يَجْتَمِعْ And by being free and always being ready for knowledge, anytime you're, you push everything else aside and you're free for knowledge, and it will come to you, you see. So he mentioned three things. بِالْحِرْسِ عَلَيْهِ يُتْبَعْ by striving, a person can really follow up knowledge. One, بالحب له يستمع. With love, a person is able to listen to knowledge. Three, وبالفراغ له يجتمع. يجتمع. And also, by freeing himself, always trying to um, be free from knowledge, he, knowledge will gather for him. And then he said, after that you come with that, you gain knowledge. How to still gain it even more? Teach that knowledge to the person who is ignorant about it. And learn from the one who knows it. He said, if you do that, you learn that which you're ignorant about it. About. And you memorize that which you already learned. You memorize. Shafi'i rahimullah, he said, he mentioned uh, in his poetry, in his diwan, he said, أخي لن تنال العلم إلا بستة سأنبيك عن تفصيلها ببيان ذكاء وحرص واجتهاد وبلغة وصحبة أستاذ وطول زمان Imam Shafi'i رحمه الله said, أخي my brother, لن تنال العلم you will never gain knowledge إلا بستة except with six سأنبيك I will inform you of عن تفصيلها its clarity um, ببيان with, clar with, with evidence with clarity ذكاء the first one is what? That you are smart. وَحِرْسٌ And striving. وَاجْتِهَادٌ And حِرْسٌ um, is that you, you willingness. Uh, and اجتهاد is striving. وَبُلْغَةٌ Reaching. وَصُحْبَةُ أُسْتَاذٍ Accompanying a teacher. وَطُولِ زَمَانٍ And giving it time. Over time. That's Imam Shafi'i's and point that he mentioned. The third thing I mentioned too, uh, the first one was ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach you beneficial knowledge. The second one is to strive to the knowledge, the uh, knowledge. And the third which is ijtinabu jami' al ma'asi, to abstain from all forms of sinning, to stay away from it and not to fall in it. And, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, Allah, fear Allah, wa yu'allimkumu Allah, wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. Fear Allah and Allah will teach you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most knowledgeable of everything. Fear Allah and Allah will teach you. Come with taqwa and Allah will teach you. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 282. The next ayah Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, those who have iman, in tattaqullah, if you fear Allah, yaj'al lakum furqana. Allah makes an opening for you. Knowledge starts to open. Doors start to open for you. And that is clear. Without a doubt that anyone who has come taqwa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, يفرق به بين الحق والباطل. Allah makes for him what? An opening from the haq and the batil. He starts to see which is the true and the beneficial knowledge and that which it isn't beneficial, that he doesn't want to learn. ولذلك عبد الله بن مسعود used to say, إني لأحسب أن الرجل ينسى العلم قد علمه بالذنب يعمله. عبد الله بن مسعود used to say, I believe. And that a man will forget knowledge in which he has already gained because of a sin in which he's done. He's done. He used to say that. I believe a person will forget a knowledge in which he's already gathered, that he's compiled. He will forget it because of a sin in which he, he did. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, 
رحمه الله خمس إذا أخطأ القاضي منهن خط حظ خط خطة كانت فيه وصمتا أن يكون فهما حليما عفيفا صليبا عالما سؤولا عن العلم and عبد عمر بن عبد العزيز said خمس five إذا أخطأ القاضي five if a judge gets wrong من هنا from from them from them one characteristics a characteristics or if I if he does a mistake one of these five um, will be uh, uh, harmed if he does a sin one of these five that is going to mention is going to be harmed due to his sin his faham his hilm his forbearance his iffa his chastity afifan saliban is to be strong and powerful like the character that you can stand in front of the haq you see six and five which is the last one alim and sa'ula anil ilmi a scholar that the people ask knowledge sins will affect any all those five it will affect all those five and as i said uh, and i say a lot the call of imam shafi'i shakawtu ila waki'in bi su'i hifdi fa arshadani ila tark al ma'asi wa akhbarani bi anna ilm allah bi ilm allah nur wa nur allah la yuhda li asi he said, I complained to Waki' where he's referring to Waki' ibn Jarrah ibn Malih, his teacher. Um, even though some scholars said he never met him. Um, Waki' ibn Jarrah, Al Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, complained to him about his bad memory. And he's strong that he never met him. But uh, it's famous, so we don't need to uh, divert from that. And he guided me to leave the sins off. He said, Stay away from the sins. Uh, Shafi'i complained to. Waki' about his bad memory. The bad memory Shafi' was complaining about is the most, the greatest memory that we would all wish to have today. Uh, is that type of memory is what Shafi' is complaining about. He's complaining about just forgetting two or three mas'alas. Not us who forget every single thing. Um, then he said to him, he guided him to leave off the sins, stay away from the sins. And he told me that knowledge is light. And the sins is a fire that extinguishes the light. It will just get rid of it. Number four, Adam al Kibri wal Haya an Talab al Ilm. The fourth, to not have arrogance and shyness. Because a person who is shy, who is arrogant also, they both don't learn. Both of them they don't learn. La yata'allamu al Ilm mustahin wa la mustakbir. Mujahid ibn Jabr, as Bukhari narrated, um, that he said the shy one and the arrogant one both don't learn. And if you look at the hadith that Al Imam Al Bukhari narrated in Kitab Al Ilm, Bab Al Haya of Al Ilm, uh, Bukhari chapter the chapter the chapter of being shy in knowledge, <laughs> Bukhari chapter that he brought the hadith of Aisha where she said, "Ni'ma Nisa Nisa Al Ansar, Blessed are the women of Ansar. Why? Lam Yahun Lam Yamnahun Al Haya An Yatafakhna Fi Din. Shyness." did not stop them from learning the religion. They used to come to the Prophet and they used to ask him the things that people would be shy of, but they, never, they used to ask. So shyness did not stop the women of Ansar to get for them to know. And the Muslim sisters have to be like that. Don't let shyness stop you from learning the ruling of a matter. Don't let it. Umm Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Inna Allah la yastahi min al-haq. Umm Sulaim said, Ya O Messenger of Allah, Allah is not shy of the haq. Does the woman have to do ghusl if she has a wet dream? Qala Nabiyu, the messenger said, Yes, if she sees lubricant, something that comes out. So, so Umm Sulaim, she said, The messenger of Allah, in Allah, la al -haq. Allah is not shy of the haq. And then she asked her question, uh, radiallahu ta'ala anha. The last one, which is, Al ikhlasu fi talab al ilm wal amalu bih. The last one, which is, and uh, the fifth one, and, and that which allows a person to have uh, knowledge and to implement knowledge is um, and it's the highest one and it's rather the backbone because the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man ta'allama ilman anyone who learns a knowledge mimma yubtaga bihi Allah he learns a knowledge and he does it for the sake of Allah la yata'allamuhu 
and he doesn't learn that knowledge that a person he doesn't learn knowledge except he wants to gain dunya reasons from it for it that person will not find the fragrance of the jannah the hereafter so the first person he learned the knowledge for the sake of allah but this one he doesn't learn the knowledge except that's his aim is to get a dunya purpose he wants the respect of the people he wants to what he wants to he wants to mock the scholars. He wants to um, uh, compete with the students of knowledge. And that's his aim. He doesn't really want, his aim isn't. His aim isn't um, to benefit himself first and so for him to learn. And that's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to say, uh, that the person will, will gain knowledge according to his intention. You will gain what you intend. Whatever you see your, your learning is because your intention is reached out far. The more your intention is bigger and your sincerity is higher, then inshallah the more Allah will teach you subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for a person to learn, these five things are required. And the last one of them is ikhlas and to implement that knowledge. Ikhlas, sincerity. And to implement it, what do I mean? Go according to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi وسلم. And we conclude there. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.